Hegel in string theory, did this really happen? What exactly happened? Okay, here is what happened. So, we had Hegelian dialectics in 19th century German idealist philosophy, and then sometime in the 20th century, some category theorists decided to mathematically formalize the Hegelian dialectic in a precise way. And then what happened next is that this categorical formulation of Hegelian dialectics was applied to open problems in string theory. Now, who did this? Who is responsible for this? So, um, of course, Hegel is responsible for this because he invented the dialectics. But the main culprit who is to blame for this is um, William Laber, who is a mathematician who specializes in category theory, who decided to give a precise mathematical formulation of Hegel's logic of science and formalize it with category theory. And the next pe uh, person who is responsible for this application of Hegelian dialectic to string theory is the string theorist Urs Schreiber. So Urs Schreiber is a physicist specializing in string theory, and he used the mathematics which Laver um, developed based on Hegel's dialectic to solve open problems in string theory. Now, where is the evidence? You don't believe me. I can see that you don't believe me. Okay, well, let's first start with the easiest part. So exhibit one, Hegel's science of logic. And here we have irrefutable evidence that Hegel did indeed um, invent the dialectics because he just talks about it all the time in here. This is Exhibit 1, Hegel's Science of Logic. Exhibit 2, Laver's paper, Categories of Space and Quantity, where Laver is talking a lot about category theory, but for some reason Hegel's Science of Logic appears in here. So you see this red arrow right here, it's pointing right to the spot on the first page of this paper from Laver, where Hegel is mentioned. So Hegel is explicitly mentioned, and this paper, if you just read through it, you can see that it has an obvious agenda connect mathematics and philosophy together, and William Lavier asserts that, um, that category theory can be very useful for philosophers to render their arguments mathematically precise. There's just a very obvious agenda to um, connect Hegelian dialectics with category theory, so that's Exhibit 2. Exhibit 3, Lavier's paper Unity and Identity of Opposites in Calculus and Physics. Again, we have here a paper by Lavier where he's mostly talking about category theory, and he's talking about how to apply category to uh, category theory to physics, and again on the first page we instantly see here the name of Hegel. So we see that Laver is trying to pull Hegelian philosophy over and apply it to physical problems. Exhibit 4, Laver's paper Axiomatic Cohesion, where Laver introduces the notion of cohesive topos, which we will see in a moment in, in the string theory papers, and the definition is heavily inspired by the Hegelian dialectics. And now finally we come to Exhibit 5, the real Thing where it happened, Schreiber's differential cohomology in a cohesive infinity one topos. This is the paper which deals with some problems in string theory and um, tries to give a new mathematical approach to string theory and it uses Hegelian dialectics and it uses the cohesive toposes which Lavier invented, um, which are inspired by, by Hegelian dialectics. So it talks here already in the title about cohesive infinity toposes and like this, these cohesive toposes um, are inspired by, by Hegel. So, okay, so we see here direct proof that, that Hegel was meddling around with, with string theory. So what are the consequences? The first consequence is we now have a string theory paper that is over 1,000 pages long, because it's a very long and complicated paper that Schreiber wrote there. Second consequence, we have a string theory paper where Hegel gets cited in the bibliography. So we can here, here I just cut out a short part of the bibliography of the paper, and we can see people like like written brains in quantization, we see Hawking's a group hold approach to quantization, and then suddenly this was just Hegel uh, science of logic in there. Um, so so we now have a string theory paper which is citing Hegel and which is like using Hegel in metaphysics. The third consequence is we have a string theory paper in which the chapter names have very weird titles. So Urs Schreiber decided to give the chapter names in the paper like vague philosophical names like concept or the method or determinant negation and like determinant negation is, is like a very Hegelian thing like it's like the difference between coffee without cream and coffee without milk in Shakespearean parlance so so like we now have chapter names named after Hegelian dialectical concepts and then we have essence and reflection and appearance substance the idea externalization so these are like chapter names in this 1000 page string theory paper by Schreiber then um, fourth consequence, we have very obscure diagrams. So here we have a, a diagram explaining the difference between discrete geometry, cohesive geometry, differential geometry, and super geometry. And the difference is, of course, given by a dialectical aufhebung. 
So in discrete geometry, we have a dialectical contradiction between being and non-being. This is the lowest level right here. And above um, that, we have then the level of cohesive geometry, where this um, contradiction is resolved via Aufhebung. And instead, we then have a contradiction between becoming and non-becoming. So let's take a closer look at this diagram. So um, so this uh, I zoomed in right here. And at the lowest level, we have discrete geometry. And we have this empty set symbol, um, this, uh, which stands for non-being. And we have like this star, this is a single point, which stands for being. And when we have this uh, adjunction symbol, uh, that stands for dialectic contradiction. And then above that, we have a symbol which shows that the contradiction between being and non-being is, uh, is being aufgehoben by, by the level above. And in the level above, we have a sharp symbol, which stands for becoming. This is like the continuous modality. And here we have this flat symbol, which stands for non-becoming. This is like the discrete. But now we also have another left adjoint to the non-becoming, which is like the shape modality, and that's cohesive geometry. And like the contradictions of cohesive geometry between coming and non-becoming, uh, we can also do aufhebung to walls. And when we get the infinitesimal modality, the ital modality, and the reduced modality, which is differential geometry. And when we can also... Um, Resolve the contradictions of this level, and then we get to super geometry with prionomic modality, bosonic modality, and fermionic modality. Finally, we can do an uh, aufhebung of all the contradiction and uh, achieve this, this level of identity where it's self adjoint, where, where like, the contradictions have all disappeared in absolute knowledge, and it's just reflection and appearance and, and the absolute and so on. So that's this diagram. We get um, another, even more uh, interesting diagram where he, or Schreiber, explains how his model of string theory is built up in various steps. So let's look at that. So at the lowest level, we have logical substance type theory. When we formulate the first law of thought, which is A equals A, so, so like A and Grant would be very proud of this. And when we have homotopy type theory, and when you do internal self-reflection in a universe to get homotopy topos theory, when we resolve the initial opposition between being and non-being to get cohesive homotopy theory, when we resolve the contradiction between continuous and discrete, like between becoming and uh, non-becoming, to get elastic homotopy theory, when we resolve the contradiction between finite and infinitesimal, so that's like the level of this uh, ital reduced and infinitesimal stuff, to get solid homotopy theory, when we have a faithful model to embed it in higher supergeometry, and then we represent rheonomy and form a universal cover to get Lorentzian supergeometry, and finally we unravel the bouquet of Whitehead Towers to get 11-dimensional supergravity with M2, M5 grains, and that's where string theory we love. We always want to have string theory in 11 dimensions with supergravity. That's, that's what we want. Yeah. So, in conclusion, um, after 200 years, we finally know what Hegel wanted to say. Hegel was, in fact, talking about string theory all along. So, for example, here we can see a tweet by Urs Schreiber, where he explained that um, nobody understood what Hegel was actually talking about until um, many years later. Like, the first person to understand what Hegel was actually saying was born 106 years after his death. So, he's referring to Laver here. So, Laver, the, the category theorist who formalized Hegel's dialectic, was like the first person to, to understand what Hegel actually was talking about and what he's talking about was, was string theory. Here we can see another nice Twitter conversation where somebody said uh, that he has also jumped on the Hegel bandwagon, but that he finds it a pity that it's so difficult to convince people that it's useful. And Urschreiber explains it's not a bandwagon and we don't need any statementship. It's just esoteric knowledge for a sector and few, both who can understand will. The rest need not be above us. We will just feel and cause confusion. And here I ask you, my dear viewer, do you have what it takes to be one of select few who can understand this esoteric knowledge? Become a Hegelian string theorist now. Here is the essential reading bit. We have, of course, to read Hegel's Logic of Science. And to really understand Labiat's um, paradigm of, of grounding physics in Logic of Science, you also have to read Grassmann's Ausdehnungslehre. And after that, you have, of course, to learn category theory. The easiest textbook on category theory is, of course, written by Lavey himself, which is conceptual mathematics. But to really understand um, Schreiber's paper, you will have to know a bit more category theory. So you will also have to read more difficult um, category theory textbooks like Emily Reed's Category Theory and Context. Or you can also, instead of this one, read MacLean's categories for the work of mathematicians, but even this will not be enough because um, Schreiber in his papers is not just dealing with toposes, he is dealing with infinity toposes, so you need to read about infinity toposes, and for that you need Jacob Lewis higher topos theory, which is like the, the stuff that everyone's hyped um, about um, currently. 
And another thing you need to read is about homotopy type theory because um, like um, Schreiber's model of string theory is uh, using modal homotopy type theory. So and you need to also read that and that's also something that, that all the mathematicians are currently happy about. And then you of course need to understand a little bit of string theory and for that you can of course use the book from Sati and Schreiber, Mathematical Foundations of Quantum Field Theory and Perturbative String Theory. And if you have read, uh, read all that, then you can maybe read Schreiber's paper and maybe you understand something, like I don't understand anything. But when you can become the Hegelian string theorist who understands the esoteric knowledge that only a select few can understand. Thanks for watching.